Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you uh, why these headlights have these nipples and what to do with them and how to service these headlights and do headlight restoration and bring them into something beautiful like this. Brand new, crystal clear perfection. Perfect. Better than the day they rolled off the lot. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. Let's get down to business. A lot of people ask about these nubs here. They don't know what they are, and I explain them all the time. A lot of people in the comments don't know what they are. They're asking about them, and they don't really understand what they're for. Um, and they say things like, I usually just grind them down, which you can, but it'll make something very much harder uh, to do later on when you need it to be done. Because if they have these on there, uh, your light needs something special once in a while. I'll go into that here shortly. Uh, but as you see here, it's really dirty on top. This is a 1999 Toyota Avalon, okay? This is one of the uh, oldest cars I've done in a while. It's still in real good condition. Um, only had about 120,000 miles on it. So this car still has like double the life it's already had, even though it's old. As you see here, I am cleaning this light here with glass cleaner, um, just because the top part here was really dirty. Normally, you don't see me do this because I don't do it in the beginning because most lights are typically clean. Uh, I do this to not clog up the pads or the discs and just keep a sterile work environment. Also, um, uh, dirt and dust and stuff like that is chopped full of granulates and you know little pebbles and stuff like that so it'll um, more prone to scratch up and mar and you know dig out certain parts of light and with these pegs here you want to be gentle with these little with these little nipples that are the light you want to be gentle you don't want to scratch them up you don't want to make them messed up because they have something very important to do with the light which you'll see here in a second um It'll probably blow your mind, and um, it's kind of strange, but it's how they used to do it in the old days. And if your lights have this, uh, you're you know you're gonna need uh, this done. Uh, some newer cars have stuff like this, but it's usually typically done in the inside, where these ones are um, outside oriented. So after uh, cleaning this stuff off there, you saw I got my little paintbrush there. That's uh, a soft tip, a regular paintbrush. Um, you know, it just breaks up the dust real easy without scratching. If you get one of those hard detail brushes and use it on the light, uh, you're just potentially, um, you know, adding to more stuff you're going to have to get rid of or other. It's better just to go soft on the headlight, especially with, um, you know, you never know what stage you're going to have to use it at. Um, but anyhow, cleaning this up. You know, I'm going to take out here my trusty, dusty, you know, air duster. Blow off all this to speed up the drying. It's probably about, um, it's about to rain a little bit. Yeah, it's probably about like 45 degrees. It's early in the morning, about 9 a.m. Uh, the clouds are overhead. Uh, it's really cold and uh, it's a little it's a little windy it's a little wet out it's supposed to rain here in about an hour so um, it's not drying as fast as I want so I pull this out and dry with it let's start with the 500 but before we start with that 500 check this video out a true blast from the past systems and for mini quad headlamps. 
Again, the instruction manual will show you which adapter to use and whether you'll need to use the vacuum extension plate assembly. For aerodynamic lamps, the numbers used to set the rods on the universal adapter to the proper horizontal and vertical settings are found on the face of the lamp. For demonstration purposes, we'll be aiming a standard rectangular two-lamp system, so we'll use the large black adjustable adapter. First, we'll adjust the rods on the adapter to the zero setting. Now, put the adapter on the aimer with the single rod at the top. With the adjusting rods set on the proper number, you're ready to attach the aimers to each headlamp. Remember that Unit A must be used on the driver's side of the vehicle and Unit B on the passenger side. The yellow targets of each aimer must face toward each other. Holding the aimer in your left hand, rest the adapter pads on the headlamp aiming pads. Then, push the white piston handle with the right hand until the suction cup engages the headlamp. Then, quickly pull the piston handle back until it locks in place. Attach both aimers in the same manner. Now we're ready to adjust the horizontal and vertical aim of each headlamp. Headlamp alignment is an important safety factor, and you are providing a valuable service. In addition, it is a profitable service when merchandise... Well, there you have it. That's why you have these headlight nipples here. Um, the device actually suctions onto them or, but yet, uh, uses them as a guide and then suctions onto, um, this headlight surface. Now, there's other devices. That was just one, uh, particularly from the, uh, one of the companies there that was stated. Um, uh, but there's other companies that make them, but they're, they're roughly the same thing. Just kind of like, uh, different uh, power tool manufacturers or drill manufacturers and you know they're pretty much the same thing they're just made by different people and that's what they're for with these lights uh, these lights go out of calibration uh, quite easy uh, if you're roughing your vehicle or just uh, time and weather they go out of calibration you have to calibrate them so they point down or so they point correctly so you can see correctly at night um, it is uh, very interesting, I think, uh, how technology changes. As you see, that was a very old video, probably from uh, mid-80s, if not earlier. Um, these lights have been like this uh, since the 70s, uh, all the way up to, like, um, I don't know, maybe a couple manufacturers still dealing with them around mid-90s. Um, but yeah, that's what the deal is. That's why you don't want to grind these off. And that's why um, you, you want to be gentle with them. And you want to just, you know, um, not uh, really rough them up. As you see, I start with the fresh pad and I go around them before I do anything else. Because I don't want to spend too much time there. I don't want to grind them down. I don't want to change the shape of them. I don't want to make them smaller. Because the devices are going to have to sit on them. I'm not sure how many mechanics actually still use these devices. I would think um, uh, some of them probably should because technically it's the um, proper way to do it. You can align them without um, using a device. It's more of a manual process. What you would have to do is pretty much park in front of something, uh, have some set um, fixtures on the wall, I don't know, stickers or uh, tape or something, and you would have to kind of manually, manually align them by hand, which um, will not be as precise no matter what you do, uh, will not come out as precise as using an actual calibration device. Kind of think along the lines of, if you know anything about um, uh, torquing down nuts or something like that, or torquing down a um, lug nut or something, you can do it without, but you have no idea if you're too tight or if you're too loose or if it's correct, but when you have an actual torque wrench that tells you uh, how much pressure are you set it at, how much pressure you know exactly um, that they are done correctly. Um, with this, it's a little more important because um, uh, they're both important, but this one has to do with night visibility, which is uh, very important. Uh, it's one of the most important things on the vehicle as um, far as night driving.
I thought this one uh, was going to be an interesting video. I wanted to uh, hold off for a little bit, but I just couldn't just because it's such an interesting topic why these things exist. I deal with them all the time, and they used to um, bug me. I'm like, what are these things? They used to eat up my pads and eat up my discs, and I used to just like, let me just leave them alone just in case. I have no idea what these are, and about a year into uh, doing this, I decided to do research on it and uh, found out this is what they are. And, um, you know, the slang term is um, nipples. I like to call them nipples or nubs, um, but they're actually called uh, calibration docks or something like that, something or other. But uh, nipples is just more memorable or memorable, you know. Everybody can remember headlight nipples or nubs, you know. I don't want to go too technical with some stuff, but it does have a technical name to it. I believe they're called uh, aiming docks or aiming pads or something like that. Let me pull this up here. There you go. They are called uh, headlight aiming pads. Uh, let's read this here. This is from Google. The nipples are used for aiming the headlights. Those nipples are properly called headlight aiming pads. And headlights which have them are mechanically aimable headlamps. So pretty much what that device does is just pulls them and moves them into a certain direction. They have a certain amount of blocking and um, by using a little bit of force and pulling and whatnot kind of moves the actual headlights. They're much different than the ones that are more modern that are pretty much mounted and uh, pre like uh, aimed or pre uh, aimable or whatnot by the factory. They're pretty much long as they're screwed into place. That is how they're supposed to be. And that's how they're supposed to aim. Uh, some higher end vehicles have moving parts inside their headlights, uh, which are really expensive headlights. A lot of uh, German vehicles have these tuned uh, light innards and these lights move inside uh, computer programmable uh, pretty much with the, when you're turning, when you're stopping, when you're close to something they adjust and they do all these weird things those lights are really expensive like two thousand uh, dollars plus so you got to be careful when you're working on those german cars you gotta you gotta really bring it you gotta watch the headlight pro to see what time it is and see what's going on because you, you don't if you're not comfortable with it man don't touch those lights because that's one hell of a thing to have to pay for somebody's two thousand dollar light their twenty five hundred dollar light and then spend six hundred dollars for an installation and it's getting bankrupt you you know this can really mess things up but see how smooth and gentle i am i'm just using the fresh pad there that fresh p800 just working it around working it around that boom 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 without barely even touching it because i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna do the actual nub with hand you know by hand as you've seen the first time let me adjust this camera here but like by first time you know like the first time you saw me i'm gonna come back and i'm just pretty much you know massage it out or uh, you know, we're like, um, <laughs> I can't even say that. I was going to say, like, you know, you do it your lady or whatnot. But um, massage it out and, you know, just twist it and twist it. And, you know, it doesn't take much. It's such a small surface. And it's uh, generally, there's not much uh, tarnish or there's not much um, oxidation or even clear coat material left on the nubs. It's probably the first place that it goes away. So you don't have to work too hard at it. You know, it can do them real easy by hand and touch up the areas uh, you know around it by hand but uh, once you get those out the way then you go ahead and clear out the rest of the headlight here uh, this headlight is so old and it has never been uh, restored before as you see um, it, it's so old 1999 and it has never had a headlight restoration before I can tell I know the difference between a uh, virgin light or a light that's been done numerous times or a light that's just been done one time um, I've um, been you know not so much that I've done so much what is part of it but I really examine and I really pay attention to detail and I really educate myself and um, I always do an inspection before I you know a visual inspection and physical inspection before I even get into the headlight so I know what I'm getting into and so that I know if there's something wrong that I need to tell them or something I need to watch out for and that I know if it's been touched before if somebody else has done anything to a before and what have they done so with that being said um 
yeah, you just got to uh, be careful with these nubs because as you see those machines sit on those uh, little pegs or whatnot, if you grind those down, you're not going to be able to do that uh, calibration with these lights. It's not going to work. You're not going to know where to put that device, even though you can, you might be able to see where the nubs are. It's still just a hair off, you know, just a little bit off, just like a half a centimeter, a quarter centimeter off is going to change your whole calibration system. It's going to change everything about it. You'd be better off just doing it manually, like I said, which is um, never going to be quite correct. You can get in the vicinity. It's almost like um, this thing needs to be scoped. Like if you had a sniper rifle and, um, you know, you had a scope on it, you know, and you're, you're shooting or whatever, that's how precise these need to be. Whether if you had a, you know, our versus, you know, the manual calibrations, if you had a sniper rifle and you're just using your eyeball, it's not going to be the same. It's nowhere going to, it's not going to be precise. But the worst thing about these things is if you're not paying attention, or even if you are, they generally um, eat up the sides of your uh, your spindle Jeez, at the bro. end, your your you know your interface pads and all those things, the sponges. If you're not paying attention, if you're um, you know your 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 P3000s and your you know your orange finesse pads and stuff have a tendency to get chewed up by these nubs by trying to tiptoe around them but on um, the other flip side of uh, things if you weren't trying to tiptoe around them you'd be grinding them down and messing them up and then you know you know what happens when they take it into a uh, place to get an oil change and they're like hey you just had your headlights done I can see they're beautiful but hey you want me to calibrate them and they're like oh yeah yeah calibrate them you see how I tapped on it like that you never want to directly hit that hit any of those nubs with any kind of pad with with these with this pad it's not that bad I'm barely touching it I'm using this pad for them but this pad is not going to remove stuff it's just going to smooth stuff out it's going to it's a scratch remover so just briefly touch it with that but anyways if you went there and they're like hey yeah now you need them to be calibrating because i just checked and they're like pointing to the freaking sky or something right so they will go to calibrate them and then they're like oh we can't calibrate them because the machine doesn't fit on there because our calibration device doesn't fit on there things like this happen and you'll be like and then what, what, what's gonna happen next they're gonna call you what the hell happened to my lights oh you grind my nubs down or mechanic might be like hey look at this this nub is like it looks like a hook and this other one is gone and this and that and you know you just you don't want problems man you want to leave the vehicle in better condition than it was you want to leave it with all all the good things are all the things that's supposed to have on this headlight and on this vehicle. Uh, that's the best practice. That's what you would want. Uh, you know, that's what anybody would want. So, you know, do on to others as others do on to you. Or, but yeah, no, that doesn't make sense. Do on to others as you would want to be done. That's better. That is a better, that's a golden business practice. That's a golden way to be in life. Treat people the way you want to be treated. This is my blower. This is one of my just favorite devices to use during a headlight restoration. I probably use it every single time unless uh, I run out of power or something. I guess I forget to charge it, but you know, I use it as much as I can because it helps keep a sterile environment. You really want to keep a sterile environment because you're dealing with a substance that can scratch easy, that can, um, you know, soak up the wrong stuff and make, you know, just pretty much make your end product uh, not as good or make it so you have to do it from one or redo it from one little tiny mistake. So I always keep a sterile environment. I keep all this dust away. I keep all this water dripping away, all this Windex dripping. I keep all this dust away. I keep, you know, all that stuff away because, you know, that last, that last little 30 seconds when you just sprayed your sealer on there or your UV coat on there, um, you know, it matters. It only takes this thing, you know, to form a, a complete crust, which is the dryness on the outside, the outer side of the uh, spray. 
it only takes 30 seconds for that to uh, dry to where nothing can mess up. But within that 30 seconds, if you're not clean, if you're not, um, you know, sterile enough, a wind gust can come and blow dust into it, giving it an orange peel effect or giving it, um, you know, just doing, you know, bad things to it. You, you know, little hairs in it, little fibers, you know, uh, dog hair, whatever can be locked in there and then it's just not as good and if you're a perfectionist or you care about what you're doing somebody's paying you to do something or you're doing it for a friend or you're doing it for a video or something you're gonna have to do it over because i mean you know your your reputation's online you know um but some people honestly don't care about that me i care about that i want to be the best at what i do for myself, I, you know, and for the people I work for, um, I want them to tell their friends, I want them to tell their auntie, I want them to tell, you know, uh, their, their co-workers, you know, I want them to want their niece's car done, I want them to trust me with, uh, you know, their family and friends and, you know, people, you know, I want them to feel that I'm the best kept secret. I don't want them to feel like, hey, oh God, that guy, there's all kind of dog hair and my, you know, and his seal and it was clear, but I mean, like, look at this, you know, look at this orange peel here and look, he left all this glue here and his tape is everywhere and he scratched up. Nah, like, you'll never hear no, nothing like that from me because I inspect before and after. After inspection is just as important as before. If you feel something's wrong you gotta fix it if you can't fix it you gotta tell them about it okay um there's been plenty of times where i've told them hey i don't think this was there before i started this and that you know i'll come back and take care of it or this and that or whatever and you know you just gotta do what you gotta do um nobody's perfect but um you just gotta do the right thing but with these headlight nubs here anyways back to you know back on track back on topic here <laughs> Um, these headlight headlight nubs here. You got to be real careful. I'm kind of going fast. You should probably go slower unless you're um, skilled with this. Um, it looks like a, you know it's just flowing. It's so nice. I'm really using a lot of muscle to keep this still because if you see or if you can hear um, when it's going fast, I'm doing 1700 RPM. And when I'm getting next to those uh, nubs, I'm slowing down. But still, um, you have to keep it steady or those nubs will really eat up your orange finesse it pad out of all the discs and pads your orange finesse it will get ate up from the sides and then once it starts getting ate up from the sides they start falling apart so uh, what i do is i make sure i use an older one on them because the older ones start getting rounded and tougher edges if you use the new ones that are really thick like an inch thick half an inch thick they'll really eat them up but with this video, I just wanted to shed a little insight on these because uh, a lot of people don't know what these are, uh, especially with the new generations or just anybody who's not a mechanic or something a real mechanic mechanically inclined will not know. I mean, I was a headlight specialist for a year before I knew what these were, and I, I had done probably 30 of these things, you know, before I understood or knew what they were and just kept nagging me one day. I just said, I'm going to find out about these things. I keep getting these things. I have to find out about these things to be what I am. I need to know about these things. So I finally looked them up and started researching them. And uh, like I said, man, Google is your best friend. Uh, we're living in the age of information. If you guys don't know something, you know, look it up. If you don't know something, uh, you know, you YouTube it. That's what these videos are for. That's what, um, you know, this information is for. But as you see there... You know, there's a, you know, might be a little bit of haze and not clear as clear be, uh, you know, around um, the uh, nipples because you don't want to keep playing with them. You just want to get it in, within in shot or within ear shot and uh, get down with it. Uh, as you see, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, you clear them up and they are crystal clear. Uh, but you don't want to let the whole light slip like that whatsoever. Just like a little microscopic, you know, circle around there. But um, they look beautiful and they are crystal clear. And the thing with this, um, some clear coats you spray and they'll clear up a little bit in a couple minutes. Or they'll be really clear and they'll, they'll start dulling out a little bit as they dry. The beautiful thing about the Meguiar's headlight coating is when you spray it, literally that liquid wet look is how it dries. It dries 
so fast it dries like right now it's like 45 degrees outside it literally like fully dries in three by about three minutes in that temperature uh the crust will form in about 30 seconds uh 30 40 seconds it's already formed right now and it'll be completely dried in about um two more minutes and then it will cure in about uh 24 hours fully cure and that just means when i say cure it just means adhering to the headlight and hardening up to its fullest um but look at this beautiful and it's going to look like this. It's going to look like this. Nothing's going to change. That's a beautiful thing about this product, especially when you work the steps. It's going to look that clear. When you do what I do, it's going to look that clear. When you do this method, it's foolproof and it's going to look like that, whether you're the Headlight Restoration Pro or just an everyday Joe, you know. Uh, but uh, tip, pro tip, as you just saw there, uh, the light, look at that. Look at that other light. When it's cold Damn, outside, son. you got to give the light a couple feet with the cooling fans. Or, I mean, with the um, forced air fans because the cooling effect uh, is a little bit too much. You don't want to get them cold. You just want the air to hit them. All right. We're going to wrap that up and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching. The Headlight Restoration Pro.